This special presentation is provided to the public by Armin Ra University. It is read and voiced by Shakim Ra. Who was Metu Hotep II? Mentu Hotep II, meaning Mentu is satisfied, also known under his pronomen Neb Hepet Ra, meaning the Lord of the Rudder is Ra, was an ancient Egyptian pharaoh, the sixth ruler of the 11th dynasty of Kemet. He is credited with reuniting Kemet, thus ending the turbulent first intermediate period and becoming the first pharaoh of the Middle Kingdom. He reigned for 51 years according to the Turin King's List. Menchuhotep II succeeded his father in Tep III on the throne and was in turn succeeded by his son, Menchuhotep III. Menchuhotep II ascended Kemet's throne in the Upper Egyptian city of Thebes. During the First Intermediate Period, Kemet was not unified during this time, and the Tenth Dynasty rival to Menchuhotep's 11th, ruled Lower Kemet from Heracleopolis. After the Heracleopolitan kings desecrated the sacred, ancient royal necropolis of Abydos in Upper Kemet in the 14th year of Menchuhotep's reign, Pharaoh Menchuhotep II dispatched his armies north to conquer Palestine. Continuing in his father's Entef III's conquests, Metuhotep succeeded in unifying his country, probably shortly before his 39th year on the throne. Following and in recognition of the unification in Reno year 39, he changed his titulary to Sima Dawi, meaning he who unifies the two lands. Following the unification, Menchuhotep II reformed Kemet's government to reverse the decentralization of power, which contributed to the collapse of the old kingdom and marked the first intermediate period, he centralized the state in Thebes to strip nomarchs of some of their power over the regions. Menchuhotep II also created new governmental posts whose occupants were Theban men loyal to him, giving the pharaoh more control over his country. Officials from the capital traveled the country regularly to control regional leaders. Menchuhotep II was buried at the Theban necropolis of Deir el Bahari. His mortuary temple was one of Menchuhotep II's most ambitious building projects and included several architectural and religious innovations. For example, it included terraces and covered walkways around the central structure, and it was the first mortuary temple that identified the pharaoh with the god Osiris, Aser. His temple inspired several later temples, such as those of Hatshepsut and Tutmose III of the 18th dynasty of Kemet.
Some depictions of Menchuhotep seem to show that he appeared to be a giant. Menchuhotep II was the son of Entep III and Entep III's wife, Ea, who may also have been his sister. This lineage is demonstrated by the still of Hananu, Cairo, 36346, an official who served under Entep II, Entep III and his son, which the stilla identifies as Heru as Ankh Ib Dawi. Mitchuhotep II's first Horus name. Mitchuhotep II had many wives who were buried with him in or close to his mortuary temple. Mitchuhotep II is considered to be the first ruler of the Middle Kingdom of Kemet. The Torin Canon credits him with a reign of 51 years. In the 14th year of his reign, an uprising occurred in the north. This uprising is most probably connected with the ongoing conflict between Mitchuhotep II, based in Thebes, based at Heracleopolis, who threatened to invade Upper Kemet. The 14th year of Mitchuhotep's reign is indeed named Year of the Crime of Thinnis. This certainly refers to the conquest of the Thinite region by the Heracleopolitan kings, who apparently desecrated the sacred, ancient, royal necropolis of Abydos in the process. Menchuhotep II subsequently dispatched his armies to the north. The famous tomb of the warriors at Deir el-Bahari discovered in the 1920s contain the linen wrapped unmummified bodies of 60 soldiers their shroud bearing Menchuhotep II's cartouche due to its proximity to the Theban royal tombs the tomb of the warriors is believed to be that of heroes who died during the conflict between Menchuhotep II and his foes to the north Mary Kare, the ruler of Lower Egypt at the time, may have died during the conflict which further weakened his kingdom and gave Mitchell the opportunity to reunite Kemet. The exact date when reunification was achieved is not known, but it is assumed to have happened shortly after or before the 39th year of his reign. Indeed, evidence shows that the process took time, may be due to the general insecurity of the country at the time. Commoners were buried with weapons. The funerary stilla of officials showed them holding weapons instead of the usual regalia. And when Menchuhotep's the second successor sent an expedition to Punt, some 20 years, after the reunification, they still had to clear the Wadi Hamamat of rebels. Following the reunification, Menchuhotep was considered by his subjects to be divine or half divine. This was still the case during the late 12th dynasty, some 200 years later. In Asuret III and Amenemhat III erected stele commemorating opening of the month ceremonies practiced on Mentuhotep II statues. Mentuhotep II launched military campaigns under the command of his vizier Keti, south into Nubia 
which had gained its independence during the First Intermediate Period. In his 29th and 31st years of reign, this is the first attested appearance of the term Kush for Nubia in Egyptian records. Mentu Hotep II's self deification program is evident from temples he built, where he is represented wearing the headgear of men and a men. But perhaps the best evidence for this policy is his three titularies. His second Horus and Nepti names were the Divine One of the White Crown of Kemet, while he is also referred to as the Son of Hetheru at the end of his reign. Mentuhotep II changed his titulary twice during his reign, the first time in his 14th reignal year, marking the initial successes of his campaign against Heracleopolis Magna to the north. The second time on or shortly before his 39th year of reign, marking the final success of that campaign and his reunification of all of Kemet. More precisely, this second change may have taken place on the occasion of the said festival celebrated during his 39th year on the throne. In general, the titularies of Mitchuhotep II show a desire to return to the traditions of the Old Kingdom. In particular, he adopted the complete five-fold titulary after his reunification of Kemet, seemingly for the first time since the Sixth Dynasty, though known records are sparse for much of the First Intermediate Period that preceded him. Another proof that Menchuhotep II paid great attention to the traditions of the Old Kingdom is his second nomen, sometimes found as Sa Hetheru Nebet Genuet Menchuhotep. This reference to Hetheru rather than Ra is very similar to the titulary of Pepe I. Mentuhotep II's most ambitious and innovative building project remains his large mortuary temple at Dier el Bari. The many architectural innovations of the temple mark a break with the old kingdom tradition of pyramid made complexes and foreshadow the temple of millions of years of the new kingdom. As such, Mentuhotep II's temple was certainly a major source of inspiration for the nearby but 550 year later temples of Hatshepsut and Tutmose III. On the west end of the hypostyle hall lies the holiest place of the temple, a sanctuary dedicated to Menchuhotep and Amen Ra, leading to a small spios which housed a larger than life statue of the king. The sanctuary itself housed a statue of Amen Ra and was surrounded on three sides by walls and on one side by the cliff. The inner and outer faces of these walls were all decorated with painted inscriptions and representations of the kings and gods in high relief. Surviving relief fragments show the deified king surrounded by the chief deities of Upper and Lower Kemet, Nekbet, Seth, Heru and Wajet, and on a par with them. The gods present the king with bundles of palm branches, the symbol of millions of years. This relief is a manifestation of the profound 
religious changes in the ideology of kingship since the Old Kingdom. In the Old Kingdom, the king had been the lord of the pyramid complex. Now, he is reduced to a human ruler, dependent on the god's goodwill. His immortality is no longer innate. It has to be bestowed on him by the gods. <laughs>